This time on Route 40 Rust, we're going to talk about the intriguing. We're going to talk about the intriguing history of the Ford tractors, and we're going to service on this 1957 Ford Powermaster and feed the chickens. First thing we're gonna do, this little girl, change on the, the engine oil. It probably hasn't been changed, and I'd rather not talk about that. But uh, it's a every hundred hours service, and the oil filter is every two hundred hours. Now the proof meter's been broken on this thing for a decade, so I don't really know where we stand. But I do know that Wix filter that's on there. I did that, so it can't be too bad. So Henry Ford started the tractor company in 1906 and he called it, well the company itself because Ford Motor Company didn't want much to do with it, called it Ford and Son. And you wouldn't believe this, but the first tractor was called the Model F or the Fordson. I'll be darned, you know? Didn't write a date on that because I'm garbage. And the tractor wasn't really sold in America at first. It was sold in primarily in Europe, like in Ireland. Oh, yep, that hurt. Anywho, during World War I, let's see, England suffered from labor shortages and a naval blockade. And they had major agricultural issues and asked Ford if he could expedite a big order of tractors to them. And a year later, 1918, the forts and tractor was uh, available to U.S. farmers. Should have brought a rag. That needs a good cleaning. Oh, no, oh, oh, no, oh, oh, it's too early. By the 1920s, 75% of all tractors sold was the Fortson. So the 1920s were good for the Model F or Fordson tractor. But by the Great Depression, that tractor was outdated. And people just didn't have the money for things like that. But not to worry, because something magical happened in 1939 that kind of changed the way agricultural has been forever and really set some stuff. Henry Ford, just by shaking his hand, shaking the hand of Henry Ferguson, you might have heard of that name, started a deal where Henry Ferguson designed attachments and plows and accessories and all that, and he even did his own tractor work. And they came out with the legendary 9N and 2N series. What Henry Ferguson is most famously known for is the design of the three-point hitch, which is the standard on all tractors today, where you have a top link and the two bottoms, and it interchanges to about every implement known to man. So after this legendary handshake with between Henry and Henry, Ford and Ferguson, Goodness gracious, World War II started and the tractor was in high demand. 
due to labor shortages. But unfortunately, halfway through the war in 1943, Edsel Ford passed away. It was pretty unexpected. And Henry Ford had to come back to the company, kind of spearhead things. And perhaps all that stress of that in his old age took a toll on him and he ended up passing away in 1946. Nope, no he didn't. 46 is when he came back. I don't know when he died. A couple years later after he came back, so he came back in 46. I don't know. Anyway, you know, you might want to comment below and fix all these mistakes I have about tractors. At any rate, he died a few years later and that's when everything changed in the tractor world. Henry Ford II, the grandson of Henry Ford and the son of Edsel, came on board to run the company known as Hank the Deuce. And Hank the Deuce, when he just obliterated Henry Ferguson's handshake. He said, nope, that's not how we do business. So now that Henry Ford II is in charge of things, and he kicked Henry Ferguson out of the deal, he created the legendary Aden tractor, Aden, and he used all of Ferguson's inventions without Ferguson. He just cut him out of the deal, which is a jerk move. But then again, I don't know how wise it is to make global business arrangements with a handshake anymore, even if it was the 20s and 30s. Anywho, it didn't take long for Ferguson to realize <laughs> what this 8N was. <clears throat> and of course he sued. And of course Ford fought him. And of course Ford lost. Which happens a lot if you know anything about intermittent wiper blades and other things. And is Ken Miles still alive? And with all the lawsuits that eventually killed the 8N, which is okay. Ah, they're about ready for a new model. <clears throat> so in 1953, Ford came out with the Golden Jubilee to celebrate its 50th year anniversary. And it rolled out a new line of tractors. It was two primary series. It was the 600 series or the 601 and the 800 series or the 801. And that had like five or six different branches off of it. And uh, that tractor sold for, I don't know, less than a decade, that series. And that's what this is. This is 801 series. It's a 841 Power Master. I like having Fords. So like half of my vehicles and tractors all use the same 1A filter. What's today? All right. We're doing the good thing. So there's a little bit of conspiracy around Henry Ferguson's death after all the lawsuits and killing of the Aden. So it all makes sense that, uh, you know, there might be some harsh things going on there. And uh, Henry Ferguson committed suicide in 1960. Now, I don't know if he's got some family still running around, so I won't assume anything. But there is some, you know, rumors spreading around about that. And in true... Henry Ford, Hank the Deuce fashion, the very next year, Ford just obliterated the tractor and agricultural industry with the 6000 series, which was the biggest, most powerful tractor, I think, in all of America at that point. Anywho, let's screw this can on. <clears throat> now I'm probably gonna, yep, off to a good start. I don't know how you can recommend filling a oil can when it goes on horizontally I guess you just make a mess I don't know I don't know to tell you guys make a mess oh. not bad not too bad take it So a little about this tractor. Again, it's 1957 841 Power Master. 
and I've had it for a handful of years primarily because uh, it's got a front loader and shovels suck and uh, kind of pull a disc and a little plow around the wife's garden route 40 is getting busy it's Easter weekend guys anyway uh, I've had it for a while and I haven't done too much to it I'll do a walk around and I gotta service a few more things like the oil bath and uh, the distributor cap you put a few drops of oil we'll cover all that we'll do a quick walk around of all the serviceable items we won't cover some of the drivetrain stuff and the rear axle because that's some higher mileage if you do check the fluid on the thing on the thing on the red things and there's some and, you know adding things we're not gonna mess with that this is your dailies and your hundred and two hours uh if you're in a dusty area like to plow in a field you gotta you know clean the oil the oil bath you know change the oil on that which i'll do here in this actually Let's see if we can get it, drain it. Oh, it's so old. Do this one handed and make a mess of things. I got a, it's like spring is finally here and I've got a laundry list of honeydews. And like most of you folks, I got family coming in to celebrate. Easter or Resurrection Sunday, whatever flavor of holiday you're into, that's okay. We're some Resurrection Sunday folks. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. You can. You cannot. Oh, that looks good. Oh, I must have serviced this like. Ah, anyway. We'll change on it. So the oil filter, every other oil change. 100 hours on the motor oil. <clears throat> to replace this belt. And that's done last winter. Probably need to clean that sediment bowl out. And look at that nice wiring. These are all good things. I'm a good, I'm a good responsible tractor rider. Had the tilt cylinder rebuilt not too long ago. We're going to have to put engine oil in here you got to clean out this crankcase ventilation do, do, do. I don't know where to set you oh there you won't forget about it you gotta put a it says see this little guy oh, got dirt in there see if I can flip your jig into this honey hole see that you put a couple drops of oil in there which we'll do uh, we already talked about cleaning the crankcase the oil and this is uh, I don't even want to call it a PCV valve this is a we're taking too much stuff off at a time I'm gonna forget and lose this wing nut Let's put the wing nut by the battery and you clean that out, <clears throat> that material, which looks pretty good. I've, I've maintained this apparently, <laughs> minus this ground wire wrapped around a water neck and the, the battery. There's the C801 Power Master. It's a 841 because it's a four speed. If it was the five speed, it would be a 861 and had a live PTO. This does not have a live PTO, but. When I get all the fluids and oils um, topped off, we'll make some videos of starting it up and all that good times. So this engine, it's a 172 cubic inch four cylinder. And they say she'll put out 62 horses, gross. I don't know. I don't know about that. Let's see if I can do this one handed. Flip up. Oh. Put more dirt in there than anything. And this is just a couple drops. That's all it says. Light. So we'll spray out that. You know what? That's pretty clean. So I'm just going to lightly coat that with oil. 
should take it off and kind of clean it up. Some brake clean or a solvent. Nope. Wrong one. And all these guys. It says top there. Slide that guy back on there. Do the wing nut. I don't know what kind of power these things put to the back. Ground power. Probably 170 something foot pounds of torque. Distributor that. We'll just forego cleaning that because that's the wrong thing to do. We'll dump this thing takes five quarts of oil on top of what you put in the oil filter, which wasn't much. So maybe a little bit more. We'll check it. We'll check it. What else have we got to do over here? Oil filters on. Oh, oil bath. I think I'm just gonna stuff that back on. That's the right thing to do. about when it comes to the oil bath and air filter this little thing I'm gonna jiggy my vent is your air intake it depends what you're working on they can clog up check out your poor four banger it's just got a screen sometimes creatures build nest in there no weeds or nothing bees anyway your air goes in to the oil bath filter through the oil cup Boo. to the engine all good things so that looks okay this tractor's in better shape than what i thought it was going to be in i kind of neglected on it for a couple years i don't run it too hard you know, these old tractors don't get used like they used to. I don't know. Could be wrong. Some of you fellas out there hitting the ground with these things. You guys are plowing up the acreage still. Hats off to you. And I even got the fancy fat boy seat. Not the old springy metal guy that people make bar stools out of now. So hats off to you guys. Comment below. Let me know if you still work grounding an 8n or a 9n or the golden jubilee the golden jubilee had a nicer badge said stuff and had beautiful things it might have been golden i don't know brush guard radiator protector what was i gonna do over here oh yeah a couple winters ago i was plowing snow with my grader blade starting it off and at nighttime you could just see the old plug wires arcing off in a lightning show. So your cap, rotor, wires, plugs. Uh, I think I did the points on it. And I have this <laughs> fancy Excel coil in here because I was fighting an ignition problem. So I thought and I even wired in a ballast resistor there. And I think I have a toggle switch here to, you can toggle the ballast resistor in and out of the circuit to see if it helps. But I think if you run too much voltage to these you're going to be burning up points in no time so i think i was testing on that i don't know what it's set on now but i've got a handful of points i think maybe in the toolbox i don't know again i don't run this tractor hard enough to be tearing it up i think we're ready to start on it and try to check the oil level maybe yeah all right well, let's do that then a lot of work done to do, or to do today better quit fooling around see there's the established 1903 so why 1953 was the 50 year anniversary because i did math today 
Uh, Alright. Well, Can't lose you now. Where my where did my coffee cup go? I'm a mess this morning. I even got all the kids out here helping with farm chores. So it's a bit hectic. They keep coming to you looking for stuff, needing help. That's good though. Alright, so climb on board this vessel. So we got clutch pedal. Left brake, right brake, so you can swing her around. Shifter, it's in gear so it doesn't roll away. Starter button, throttle, give her a little gas. Just gonna ignition on. Aww. A little choke. That run a second. Oh yeah. What a good tractor. What a good tractor. And these front loaders are dangerous. They'll get you in trouble. I've uh moved a lot of engines around with this guy. You get weight in there, it gets scary. And these tires are calcium filled which helps a little but the smart thing to do we'll get one of those carryalls like the big box you put on your three-point put some rocks old cylinder heads an international harvester engine that's what those are good for let's see here clean clean rag on the dipstick nope gosh we're a bit low let's try this again funnel so you can't be throwing stuff when you're working now look at it look up. look what I've done that's full of dirt now I'm flinging yeah. this little. Coffee's cold. Pretty amazing tractors especially the history i think a lot of guys know about the who did i just get oil on my camera a lot of guys know about the ferguson ford lawsuit kind of changed the industry and put an end to the ford 8n which is by far the most iconic tractor in my opinion calm down international guys case guys whatever it's just one man's humble opinion. Let's try that. And how the tractor kind of halted production twice in the last century and came back for war efforts and really changed the face of agriculture for a lot of people. Pretty cool. Let's not throw that in the dirt anymore, huh? Shouldn't have to wipe you off. Mm. Let's just give her a... Tad more oil.
That'll do. That'll do it. She's ready to work all day. I know. And your breather has a little front arrow. That's where the ventilationing happens. And it says front. That way your ventilationings come go out, do their things there. Anyway, we'll do a little video montage of this thing purring around, pulling around, doing tractor stuff. But if you'd comment below, tell me about your old tractor. She's still hard at work. She's a fourth generation family tractor. Still serving your property well. Comment below, tell me about it. And if I got some of this Ford history wrong, which I most definitely did, so don't write a you know school paper about the history of Ford tractors off of what I said, because it's probably all wrong. But it's just how I know it in my head, so it's right to me. Anyway, yep. Comment below, subscribe. Hope you enjoyed this little video on a beautiful Saturday morning.